You're the nicest human being I've you ever You are a really good oh, person. Thank you. Except for last night when you tried to assault me on the roof. I say, I say one <laughs> I mean, time, George, I gotta I'm call you out. I, yeah, but I everybody mean, just, crumbles. Well, it's just, you know, I, I you try to. You threw a steel chair at Logan! <laughs> Uh, Mike flew the entire crew out here for absolutely no f***ing reason. <laughs> there goes our entire month's budget for Impulsive. He said, guys, the Hard Rock's doing an opening. We'll make sure to get a podcast with the boys only and get a guest. Who's the guest, Mike? The, there was a little bit of issue with the guest <laughs> with the guest episode, but I want to say this. I was prioritizing and mostly focused on the boys only episode because as everyone knows, it's been quite some time since we've had a official boys only episode. And those are the favorites of the audience. <laughs> also, I will say this. The majority of the crew was flown out here, once again, by the Hard Rock because they're incredible. The hotel is beautiful. It's in a great location. The rooms are stunning. And the rooms are stunning. Amazing. Amazing hotel. Shout out to the Hard Rock, New York City. If you come to New York, stay at the f***ing Hard Rock. Oh, f I, uh, <laughs> So I got, I got a new place that kind of parlays into the, the embarrassing story that I have for you guys. And I've waited for the for Impulse because I, you guys are going to roast the shit out of me. I got a new place in Arizona. I want to post to my mom and dad. I want to move back to the city. Still having my place in LA, just going back and forth. Uh, I'm excited. This place that I have has a rooftop that is unbelievable. So I'm walking around. I'm super happy asking people, hey, do you like living here? They're like, oh, look at this place. And another person like, yeah. And then I went up to this guy. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Laying down, holding his phone like this, like staring at me uncomfortably. And I was like, oh, maybe he's sad I didn't ask him. So I walked up to him and I said, sir, how do you like living here? And he, and he goes... He goes, and I thought he's deaf. Okay. So yeah. I go, like a normal human being, I signed to him. Hello, my <laughs> name is George Janko. <laughs> and he goes, dude, I'm on the phone. What the fuck do you want? I was like, oh my God. You look so like I'm such an idiot. There like, <laughs> and he's like, yo, what the fuck is wrong with you? And then my whole family's right there. And they look at me, they go, did you just sign to a guy that's on his phone with AirPods on? And I was like, <laughs> you're a dumbass, Georgie. But no, you're not because you know sign language. Also, do you know sign language? I did. So I was in uh, resource class growing up and the kid next to me, I would talk to everybody and he was deaf and I felt like he felt left out. So I learned how to sign so I could talk to him too. You're, you're the nicest human being I've you ever You are a really met. good oh, thank person. You. Except for last night when you tried to assault me on the roof. I say, I say one time, <laughs> I mean, time, George, I gotta I'm call you out. the shit out yeah, of you but and I everybody mean, just, crumbles. Well, it's just, you know, I, I tried to You threw a steel chair at Logan! We have a different a relationship. Steel fucking we have chair. a different relationship. Bro, a steel fucking chair. George. Logan goes, bro, if you hit Mike, you're out. I go, what the I, fuck? I did this not say that. This guy stabbed you in the back on fucking I didn't know we were gonna mama's go basement. <laughs> and I can't smack somebody? What kind of fucking boxer are I'll you, I'll tell bro? you why, because I'll tell you, I'll say it again. Because you told me, you said, I'm gonna smack the shit out of Mike. I said, for, I said, if you incite violence towards anyone on this team, you're out. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Again, you, again, do this, again, like, you do that, you're out. I go, oh, I'm so replaceable. <laughs> no, and he came, and that's what, and that's the story. He came to me, came to my room when we talked. He was like, so man, sad. he's like, he's like, I don't like this idea that I, that I can just be taken off. I go, George, we can't have another co-host drama with a third co-host. I don't think the audience would do that again, bro. We've already bullied six co-hosts <laughs> off the show. We can't do it again. So you're stuck, bro. I don't give a fuck if you hit me with a hammer. You're on the That's show. That's what bro. I thought. That's why I thought it was okay to slap. No, no because, because you, you told said me it. it was if, premeditated. Yes. It was premeditated. I like to give my opponent a fair opportunity. Nah, fuck that. Will Smith all day. Will Smith all day. <laughs> that's a crime Walk of passion, up, brother. Smack the shit no, out of him. You no. can get away with that. No. That's why the, That's why he can throw a chair at me. He didn't know he was going to do it. He just did it. Imagine if I said, yo, Logan, I hate to say it, but I'm about to throw a chair at you. A steal one. A steal. A, a steal 90 pound. chair. And he, he never was like, yo, Mike, you're out. A steel chair. And I was like, yeah, shut up. I'm going to smack you. And he's like, yo, 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 you incite violence? You're out, buddy. <laughs> Cause he's, yeah, cause he's we don't do the violence here. Your brother's a professional boxer. You got, he fought your dad. He literally fought your father. And I say I'm going to smack some. I want everybody here to know they hate Assyrian boys. This is <laughs> and race. women. And women already <laughs> off the start of the show. Now listen, I do my absolute best. And, you know, George didn't get the room that he, he it's wanted. It's not to about the room, bro. Stop pulling. Dude, I, we, we just got into it as boys, and I just I said something that was wrong, and I bought pizza and made up for it. And what so. was the end part of it? I said, if you have an issue, always come directly to me, and I'll solve it. Yes. That's what I said. Never come to Logan, by the way. 
Never he just, comes to Logan. He's got a lot of Logan, others. I love you, bro. This is serious. Can I talk to you? Dude, I got a supermodel. I'll yes, he has a lot of shit. He has a lot of shit going <laughs> I on. I literally go, bro, please. I just want to talk to you. Meet me on the roof. I got on the roof. Almost fought Mike. You got to go, bro. I go on the Can we talk one-on-one? Got a supermodel. Dude. Can I talk right now? <laughs> just Who's the CEO? Who's running this fucking me, company, Meet me. Just Who's come to me. It? Just call, That's why I said just come to me, bro. I manage all of this bullshit so that he can do his dumb. Well, I almost assaulted you, bro. That's I didn't fine. know you were running I didn't it. Care. I would have sucked up to you if I knew you were running this shit. Listen. No, he, no he's right. You're right. We need we need someone who knows what they're doing. Dude, you know no, that's me. No, 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 no. <laughs> Did I not no, 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 Where's no, no, the no, no, gas, no, no, Mike? No, no. Where's the fucking gas, Mike? <laughs> the only thing you're running this is into the ground, Mike. <laughs> we have just come off a 10-day... Bender. Bender of the most epic <laughs> proportions. F1 Miami, straight here. It's been wild. We're all very tired. We're running on fumes. The jet set. It is the same people in every fucking city. Yeah. Every event I go to, I'm like, wonder who will meet at this one. I know who I'm going to meet at this one. <laughs> Purple Miami, <laughs> Matt, <laughs> Chantel Jeffries. And it's the... They just go from one spot to the other. And a and, salter. Oh, there's, there's and the always, salters. There's always one person from the salter family everywhere I go. Yeah, they're everywhere. No, and it's not there everywhere. Now it's we, we, we've we become a part of it. Oh, no. You guys are club rats. Are yes, we? Yes. yes. Oh, that's what you, I'm trying to whoa, say. Hold on. If you guys didn't know that you guys are like the hoes of like the men, like if, if, if there was like a description of the L.A. hoes, you, and that's not a bad I thing. I have never. <laughs> I have now. You calling me a fuckman? You are. You are a <laughs> <Again>. slut. <laughs> and by the way, very cheap slut. Like you can. Like you can just roll the dice. Whatever it lands on. That's not true. That's not. You know that's not true. You know that's not way, true. And, I and keep. Logan, Logan, I keep, Okay. You fall in love with terrible women, and you fall in love with every woman. All right. Like, <laughs> he's out of control. <laughs> you have man, to go. I fall in love. Me and Musa. I love her. This is the best girl in the world. Next day, dude. I don't know what's wrong with her, bro. Like, I really, did you know she has a family? Like. <laughs> <laughs> and then this guy, bro, like, this girl might have, like, a kid and she's no, married. No, you have to stop. Like, George, you have to stop. What? There's, a lot of this is alpha. You got to cut Well, now the that shit. I know, I can't get cut. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm always impressed with the girls Mike, Mike gets. I don't know how he does it. He had a funny story back in L.A. at the beginning of this bender. The girl, the, the completion girl. Can, can you, <laughs> well, I, I had a plan to get it. Okay, so the other day someone DM'd me on Instagram and they said, you guys have a very unique opportunity to recreate the Impul uh, the uh, Entourage show from HBO. Yeah. They said, you, you, you guys are, there is no more capable squad than this one to recreate that show because of the scenarios we find ourselves in on a daily basis. We got Vinny Chase, we got probably E. I know people want me to be drama, <laughs> but I'm the guy that advises in the business. Then who's and Jeff? Manager Jeff is, is Ari Gold, obviously, and then we got Turtle. <laughs> we got, like, it's all, it's, it's Turtle. Turtle's a lot, one of the most loved characters on the show. <laughs> He's fucking amazing. Anyways, Ari Ari Gold actually. Wants we got to we got Lloyd. We got Dylan Lloyd yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, hey sure. guys, what's up? <laughs> All right. So, anyways, <clears throat> I'm at this house party the other day, Beverly Hills, and uh, <sighs> I'm talking to this girl. I met her in Vegas, and uh, it, it was the end of the night. Things were getting pretty crazy. It was like 4 a.m., and she was like, "I have to go to the bathroom," and I saw that as like an invitation. I was like, "All right, dope. Like, I'll go with you." And it was a very packed house party, but we made our way to the bathroom and we got in without anyone really seeing us get in. So we're in the bathroom and, you know, she's doing her thing and I'm, you know, fixing my hair or whatever, like hanging out and I don't have any hair. <laughs> but, <laughs> but before you know it, you know, one thing led to another and... Uh, the classic bathroom party hookup. Bathroom, We've I was getting head in the bathroom, We've all you know? Been there. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, I've never hooked up with a girl in the bathroom. What? No, if, I, if a girl could hook up with me in the bathroom, that's not the girl I want to be with. That's, that might, that's the perfect girl for Mike. <laughs> Hold on a second. I'm not, we're not talking about marriage here, Georgie. We're talking about a little party fun, entourage style. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Sorry, party. Okay. Sorry, I'm in such in a relationship bitch mode. Sorry, dude. So, what did this girl do in the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, could you show some respect? I'm so sorry, I got to cancel the res for tonight. She forgot it was her friend's birthday. <gasps> Ooh, already getting smoked, huh? Yeah, damn. Damn, looks like somebody's the baby. How does it feel boy? to meet, hook up, and get rejected in the same outfit? <laughs> <laughs> damn, bro. That's crazy. I was not wearing this outfit when that happened. All right, so the middle one. <laughs> I'm in the bathroom, and I, I, 
I'm not really big on the pub public hookups anymore. I have anxiety. I don't l really love the idea of people being outside the door knocking. Hey, I got to get in. I got to shit. Like, it's just too much going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this night, this specific girl, bro, I I'd, I'd met her in Vegas when she had a man. And I was super into her. And she was, like, showing a lot of love back. But, like, she had a man. So I was like, whatever. This, girl, this girl's super hot. So I was really, really into it. And she's yeah. on her fucking knees going crazy in the bathroom. People are knocking, I got a shit, let me in the door, whatever, right? So I finished the act, and immediately, post-nut clarity, immediately, holy shit, I'm in the bathroom, there's a line of people outside the door, this girl's sitting here, she's seen better days from a facial standpoint, <laughs> like she's a fucking mess, bro, and I'm standing there with my dick in my hand, <laughs> like, fuck, bro, what the fuck, just, so, so, so I so I'm like fuck. Now she turns around to go into the mirror to like clean up, and I I panic and just bolt out the door. <laughs> you finish and left. Yes. So I run past this line of people and they're like looking at me like why is he running past us? Because I closed my door, the door right. So I go back into the party and I immediately like try to be that guy that just reintegrates into the party. <laughs> What's everybody doing out here? You having a good time? You know, like I go right back to my friends like, what were you doing? I was like, nothing. They're like, nothing. Just hanging out, dude, right? So this girl comes out of the bathroom in like belligerent mode, bro. And she goes up to one of my homies. I hear this story the next day. I didn't even see it happen. But she goes up to one of my boys and she goes... I just sucked some guy's <laughs> dick in the bathroom to completion. <laughs> and he just ran out. <laughs> and, the, and, like, imagine a girl coming up to you and saying that. Yeah. The first thing you would, you would say is, who, who, Who's the guy? Who Where was he? it? <laughs> who's the and guy? can you imagine for a second, in a Larry David entourage-style moment, she goes, that guy <laughs> right there she points at me I'm like what is your reaction in that like do you fall on the ground like do you just fall out and start dying laughing i would i don't i don't even i can't even picture i don't know was everybody looking at you when she did that no it was not like it, it was a loud party there was a lot going on but so anyway so i get this story the next day from this kid and i do fuck with this girl I like she's a cool girl and uh, she hits me up the next day and she goes, that was fucked up. You just left me there in the bathroom. And bro, <laughs> immediately, my manipulative chess playing mind went to work. And I said, listen, I didn't know if you had like a guy that you were talking to at the party or like, oh, wow. or, or if you were the type of the girl that wanted to be seen coming out of the bathroom with a guy, like I, I, out of respect for you, like I just wanted to make sure that we left the bathroom separately. And I'm, this is me. I'm like this. And she goes. <laughs> you see the three bubbles? She goes, she goes, I'm so sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. I, I guess I was just being dramatic. And I was like, oh, it's, comple I was like it's completely fine. Uh, what if she watches this podcast? She's going to. It's, and by it's the way, great. it's great. By the way. Great, great girl. Top, top three head. Like, fucking fantastic. This episode is sponsored by Ridge Wallet. Oh, no, there's no Look shot. Look at this thing. It's great. <laughs> it's not possible. It is. No, it holds yeah. up to 12 cards plus room for cash. No reason to have a traditional wallet anymore because Slim is in. Get yourself a Ridge wallet. Click the link in the description to use the code Impulsive for 10% off your order. The Ridge team is so confident that you'll like it, they'll let you test drive it for 45 days. You can send it back for a full refund if you don't love it. That's code Impulsive for 10% off your order. Thank you, Ridge wallet. Now back to the show. Fanta definitely watch this Caller Daddy. 100%. George and I were just talking about this a little bit. I think... Uh, I think I think maybe girls uh, in this generation are becoming a little bit more sexually forward. I think they're really, and, 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 and maybe, maybe it's partially because of the, um, the increase in uh, body sentiment and body comfortability that we're seeing. Uh, maybe it's because of we're having more open conversations about sexuality and sex in general. And I'd like to believe that the Caller Daddy podcast is leading a generation of young women who are really good at giving head. Yeah. Yeah, it's Please, fucking for gross. Sure. Whoa. <laughs> this girl goes, like, oh, that's sexist. She goes, so you guys could just go fuck around? I go, no, no, that's no, pretty gross, too. Yeah, it's fucked it's up. It's gross, but you can't just, like, neg like, negate that it's fucking... Like, if I was sitting there at my wedding day, and they're like, dude, we just heard a story about your wife, and she was <laughs> at a bathroom, uh -huh. and she sucked that dude to completion! <laughs> I would have been like, yo, we're done here. Like, I'm not married. Actually, 
You would do that? Yeah, 100%. I know some pretty raunchy sex stories about you. You think your wife would call me, marriage me off? Me and my girl do stuff together, but we're in a relationship. I think the sex could get wild and intimate. No, nah, I'm talking about like, raunchy. like, bro, you guys just met at a club, and now I'm you're talking just... about raunchy sex stories that don't involve your current girlfriend. I was a George. terrible person once. Yeah. So okay. do you think, but what I'm saying is, do you think she should break up with you because you had sex in that parking lot outside the cop station for the first time? A key that could... <laughs> no, no, don't even try it. <laughs> don't even... Well, try it if you want. I'm not... All right. A key... That can oh. open every lock is a master key. You 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 I fucked that up. Yeah. <laughs> no, here's the real reason. Uh, <laughs> you can get I, a good look might, at a T-bone by, by it, sticking it, your head up a butcher's ass. <laughs> no, I, I I don't think I don't think it's different. I don't think it's different. Also, like, I wasn't uh, a lunatic when I was single. I wasn't just fucking everything I laid my eyes on. I had a very high selection. In fact, I wouldn't actually have sex with a girl unless that if I accidentally got her pregnant, if I could bear those kids. I swear to God. That was a thing of mine. Really? Yep. If I ask, because I'd always buckle up. No matter if it was just a one night stand or whatever, if I accidentally got her pregnant, I'm fucking locked in. I'm going to make sure that kid's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not really super willing to have sex if it requires a condom. I had a relationship for a year and I never not wore a condom. Be you, you always wore a condom? Belle was the only girl that I ever not wore a condom with. Yeah. Wow. Because I was like, oh, if I get her pregnant, sick, dude, I won. Like, <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, you got to do your checks, uh, both sides. Yeah, yeah STD I, I checks, was very, both sides. very safe. Bro. Uh, like, I was very, very and, safe. and be safe, which I'm not. I wore a but condom, pulled out, ran to the bathroom. <sighs> that, yeah, the, 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 pull, the pull out thing, is, it's a little tricky. Yeah, you're re mm. It's a little tricky. I don't know how far we take this. You, you guys don't I'm, bust I'm a, girls, Hold on do a sec. Is that, is that too prerogative? What? I said it wrong. Yeah, there's no way you... <laughs> Fuck! Damn it, bro. I can't let this one go. That one was bad. I'm sorry. All right, go ahead. I think provocative yep. is the word. Yep, Were you talking about pierogies? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds too prerogative. Uh, it's been a long week. Uh, 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 I'm a pull-out surgeon, dog. Really? Expert. Master level. Master level. Why? I was, I, how? I know. Guys, how? guys. Dylan, Dylan, <laughs> guys have a lot of trouble with this. It is, it is very, very hard for lack of a better word to do it uh it, it here okay one thing i've learned about life and we all know this is that habit is is tough to break and and but when you make it it kind of sticks with you if you really hold it for a long time and i started pulling out about 40 years ago when i was 15 <laughs> and i never stopped bro like dude girl, like even my my ex like would beg me like to to not and I always would. Oh, it's it's no it's a, shit, it's a, Mike. It, she was trying to get knocked up, as proven mm -hmm. by her brand new baby. Great baby, by the way. But um, but uh, but uh, I don't know. It's like a, it's like a uh, what's the word? Like reflex. A reflex now. An instinct. Like two uh, two pre two pumps pre. I'm out. Wow. And I'm doing some uh, some shit. Oh, you're surgical. One of them wild from the other one. The one I told you about. It's way too graphic for the show. Then why even mention it? I don't know. I probably could talk about it. The, please I don't. Been, that I one's been, bad. You're not, not going to mention it. The f then mention that you can't talk about it. Well, and I then do that talk all the time it. and the audience hates it. <laughs> they get so mad. They're like, why? That, that's what I'm saying. That? Why even mention it? Well, because I was hoping maybe you pushed me to say it. All right. The, hey, the Mike, frog leap. The frog no, you, no, you can't say that. <laughs> it was a frog leap. To <laughs> Mike, Mike, the next morning, he, he comes in the car. He goes, I got to tell you, boys. I was hitting some angles last night. He goes, I was feeling like I was in my mid-20s again. <laughs> it was a great night. It's all about the chemistry with you and, and your partner. Yeah. That's what it is. Like, dude, the right partner could could bring you out of your 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 old age. You know what I'm saying? And uh. make you bring and make you feel like a kid again. Make you feel like you got your like you got your spunk back. Yeah, like you got your spunk back. As if the testosterone that I'm shooting into my ass is <laughs> Well, many men in this generation are running low on tests naturally. Really? Yeah, yeah, a, yeah totally. Yeah. Um, everyone Probably because of social media and fast food. The no, guy, it's, the it, one it's, guy. it's 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 the food. It's no, the food. it has to be. Yeah, it's a nah, bunch of shit. It's a mix. Of you know, things. it's it's there's a, there's a lot of preservatives in, in tomatoes. Also, uh, I love this podcast. Most very, people very do. Weird. Also, am, uh, <laughs> I forgot. I, I like this. Feel this. Are you on mushrooms right now? Yeah, it just feels good, man. That does feel good. Uh, can can I can I talk about the elephant in the room that isn't <clears throat> blowjob related <laughs> everyone that we know everyone we've ever had contact with every person we've met in the jet set every family member we have is now poor there's zero net worth, worth, worth is zero. absolutely nothing including us we have nothing nothing Not me 
Because I didn't invest in crypto. <laughs> the crypto market. Wait, wait, no, this is my George, moment. George, I, I swear to God, I, I will brag, launch I the entire... Haha, ha, stupid heads. Remember when you were like, NFTs. <laughs> Loon on this, motherfucker! <laughs> I've been waiting months for this because I see you guys making so much money, and I'm like, fuck, maybe I fucked up. Well, it's not, it's <laughs> not I don't money. I know when to hold them. It's not, it's not money. It's, uh, well, it used to be money. Well, now it's not. Well, they're blackjack chips, right? So, like, the crypto market has collapsed. This is what I was trying to say. Ethereum is in the toilet, Bitcoin is in the toilet, and more importantly, stable coins have become unpegged from their stability completely unstable stable coins they're supposed to be pegged to the dollar the, the u.s dollar one in particu particular called uh tether uh terra 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 it's yeah. not tether no oh ust yeah not usdt terra, terra. that just sounds me. terrible so just don't i'm, I'm done with your puns just you're sorry. on timeout 30 seconds part of the, the interruption style timer for 45 seconds <laughs> we are seeing a, a dramatic collapse. Now we've seen resets, we've seen uh, dips, as they call them. This one has felt dramatically different because there were a couple big losses, um, including the 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 DPEG, the Terra DPEG. Again, a stable coin that's supposed to be always worth a dollar cannot be worth sixty cents, which it was. I think it was even lower at one point. Luna, in particular, I don't know the Luna story, but it's it is wild, tragic. It will it it deserves its own document. I've seen some of the most insane side stories off this, but Luna itself, a, a coin that has was heavily invested and heavily liquid yeah. a month ago, billions of dollars of liquidity ha is now worthless. Yeah, actually worthless. Worthless. Less than a cent. Like fractions, less than a cent. Told you so. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> it, you know, it, it's just a funny thing. Because the same hype that could drive up the crypto market is the <laughs> hype that can destroy it. Yeah, crazy. Because none of none of crypto, like normal stock or real estate, is 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 backed by any kind of tangible good. Mm. It's 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 all just IP and 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 you know proprietary potential. Yeah, yeah. It's not even proprietary you know, uh, 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 property, it's prop proprietary potential, <laughs> which is, which is, yo, this is what is go, this is going to be uh, able to do. Uh, and, and so the same hype that could drive it up when people start f going nuts, fudding on Twitter, that shit can go in the toilet. And, and that has far reaching effects on both NFTs on, on projects that you and I are either invested in or launching. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 a, it's a bad. It's not a great time to be fully involved in crypto, especially if you were involved in Luna. KSI, my business partner in Prime, um, lost three million dollars. R.I.P. Gone. I I personally have lost over half a million thus far. Um, I just bought an ape for seven hundred and sixteen thousand dollars at the height. Yeah. I will say though. I will say now? though. If if you believe in the tech. And you believe in the function of cryptocurrency and you zoom out and go super macro, this is nothing. It's just another bump in the road. But that's really hard for a lot of people. A lot of people FOMO buy and then panic sell. You have to remove your emotions from this situation. And if you play the long game, you're going to win. Well, more importantly than that even <clears throat> is just people not playing by the most important fucking rule, which is only invest what you're willing to lose. Because... Uh. Because... A lot of these people got into situations where they were over leveraged, where their their mortgage payments were based on their ability to liquidate small levels of crypto, mm. and, and like, dude, like this is gonna this is getting ugly quick because you're looking at a mass liquidation event, you're looking at inflation fears, you're looking at war, you're looking at. By the way, the crypto market has generally always, in some way followed the regular markets yeah. and the regular markets are Horrible. shitting the fucking bed right Horrible. now too so even if you're a regular stockholder you're still in a fucked up spot it, it's a it's a little financially scary at times and that's why i launched one of the most important projects in my <laughs> life during the worst bear market we've ever seen in our lives what the fuck was i thinking i'm just kidding originals is doing fantastic yep. it's doing fantastic the market is absolute shit but 
we launched Originals, 99 Originals, the project I mentioned in the project that I've been working on for nine months, traveled the world, took a bunch of Polaroids, minted them as NFTs, the buyer gets the original 101 Polaroid, forming the Originals DAO. Uh, it's going to be a community with a community treasury that can vote what to do with the funds. And um, it's been amazing. The first one sold for, I think, 60K. The next one was 100K. Basically, we've sold four. The DAO has uh, roughly $130,000 to play with, and it's doing a m remarkable. I actually can't believe how against the grain uh, uh, to the market that it is. And I think it's because people believe in the project. I'm getting a lot of texts from like notable people who are, who are realizing quickly, I think, r truly how much work I put into this, both mental and physical work and, and energy w that is spread out by a team of fucking people. And I'm so proud of our dev team. I'm so glad we got to launch. Um, and, I, and, and Kevin, I mean, you know how long we've been working on this journey, like nine, 10 months of just like blood, sweat, and tears. And we launched and I, I couldn't be happier, man. And we continue yeah, to roll them out every day. Thanks, bro. Congrats. Originals.com. You guys are bored. You want to see some, uh, some cool art? Go to Originals.com. The, the, the people in the audience, they don't. None of them. They don't give but, a fuck. But it will be clipped and put somewhere where they, they, they don't want to hear about yeah, any of this yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They hate us. Yes, we suck. It's in the comments every time. We hate you. Yeah, we, yeah, we don't and not, not even we hate the NFT content. Because of the NFT content, we hate you as people. Like, we d actually dislike yeah, you guys. Yeah, yeah, I get it. So we'll, that was a good, quick little segment. Yeah. Crypto market's down. NFT market's down. Originals is up. A lot of people are down bad. Very few of them down as bad as Gunna and Young Thug. What happened to Gunna and Young Thug? Well, I'm happy that you asked that, George. Gunna and Young Thug, two of the world's largest rap superstars right now, were arrested on RICO charges as part of their involvement with YSL, Young Stoner Life. Oof. If you're unfamiliar with what RICO charges are, it's basically the worst thing that can ever <laughs> fucking happen Why? if you do anything related to anything. It means racketeering oh. influence and corrupt organizations act where they're looking to basically prove that you are a part of a mob or gang or mafia it is the largest fear of any organized crime unit in the world well sorry in the united states if you get hit with rico act it's over buddy well, did, curtains did six closed nine get hit with the racketeering no, his his people did the people yeah. that that he was involved with. Oh, okay, gotcha. But it's it's basically like the 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 that like, what's that Japanese? Is it a Japanese like finishing blow where they cut the person's head off as they're like bowed over? Oh, it's oh like, is it really like is that? It, is it? It's not coup de gras, is it? I think that's a dish. Yeah, that might be like or like yeah, I that think maybe. That's a dish. Anyways, no, it's couscous. <laughs> I think it's foie gras. It, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> We're not talking about duck fat today. <laughs> We're not talking about fatty livers of geese. Uh, but basically, uh, the the indictment states that uh, Young Thug and Gunna were involved with this YSL street gang that was responsible for multiple murders, carjackings, armed robberies, narcotics possessions, and de I mean the the gamut, gambit, all of it. And the story, quickly as it usually does, has become. How much should lyrics and that's fine. I, I, I how much how much should no lyrics? no no I understand you. Well, I was wondering that but too. What I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is this. I have all day, and the audience loves longer episodes. Finish your finish your task. Uh. So wait, hold Caitlin. on. So did they rat themselves out? No. There's one. It's there's one bottle in my uh, suitcase. Sorry, Mike. We launched a new flavor of prime. I'd love to hear about these these, these thugs who are going to prison for the rest of their life. But I'm, I'm more interested in uh, Ice Pop, our new flavor of prime. It's the best flavor, by the way. Really? It, it is. It's it hands, 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 hands down, down the best flavor. By far. I, I, I love forgot it. to bring the bottle. We drank all of them. It makes me feel like I'm chasing the ice cream truck as a kid again. I could drink that literally every minute of the day. Really? Yeah, it's my favorite one. Wow. It, it blows the other ones so far out of the water for me. Everyone's saying that. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's top three for me, but it's not my favorite. No, no, no. It's not possible. And I don't trust your opinion on anything right, if you right. disagree. I mean, so I love it. I, I love it. I just, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a green Me guy. I'm a blue guy. Nice no, pop. Nice no, pop's number one. Yeah. No, 100%. Okay, yeah, we agree. Every, everyone else is saying it. Um, anyway. Sorry. You <laughs> there's an so, young gunner, thug guy. <laughs> and, uh, I don't even know why I did So, they were racketeering and lyrics. You were talking about lyrics and how they shouldn't. Okay, thank you. Yes. It goes back to this question of. Should lyrics, or let's bring it back up to an even higher macro uh, perspective, should uh, the person's art 
be used against them in a court of law. Ooh. If it has to do with murder, I think so. <laughs> I, hey guys, check out this canvas. It's made out of this guy's blood. But if you look, <laughs> his bones are the skeleton, and that's real. Correct. Art, so okay? the opponent, so the opponents of it, like, and this is that like Twitter free gunner and young thug crowd that just say that no matter. <laughs> Can I pick up my fucking phone for one second without you making a big deal out of it? No one would even know. No, because I, I got it. No, because I got to say this. <laughs> this has been an elevated threat over the past seven days. You've become a disgusting human. You just sit on that fucking thing. All, you, you, it's all day. It's all. Bro, do you understand how much fucking time and effort? I put into this trip to watch you be a fucking android. <laughs> what are you doing? Dog, I be, have a, to... be a globally renowned super celebrity and enjoy your exit. Don't you have a fucking infrastructure to send fucking creative out? No, no. That's back to what we were saying at the beginning of the podcast. We have no one running our shit. Facts. We need a COO. But stop saying that. By the way, if you ever want to get something done with Logan, you get this it, during a breakup or a business meeting. Shake my hand, brother. It's done. <laughs> he does it yesterday. He says Logan, that no matter bro, what. Bro, like, dude, there's nobody running it. I talked to Jeff. He says, talk to Dylan. Dylan says, talk to Mike. <laughs> Mike says, dude, I got these bitches flying from my head. <laughs> I, I can't. I'm doing this and that. And I go, who's fucking? He goes, okay, more people on it. Shake my hand, brother. It's done. I go, you did this in Texas and in Miami, okay? And nothing has been done about it. But so. this time, it's done. And I'll tell Shake you why. Shake my hand, brother. It's done. <laughs> what was it? What was it? I told him, I told him we're going to get him uh, not uh, in the rooms with Caleb. He Bro, it's fuck not Caleb. the fucking rooms, man. Please, nobody <laughs> listen to these assholes. I'm not a diva. I share my room with Reed, by the way. I don't even have my own room. So, please. You get manicures. Pedicures. And it's good. It's very good. It's very <laughs> it, good. It is, it is really good. I, I got to get better r and I got to get better being off my phone. The issue is there's a lot going on You're right now. You're very busy. And especially with originals, dude. Y'all have all no I, all fucking I idea. Is, all I ask is, while we're on the podcast... This is this is this is the holy land for us for okay. all of us. All right. Stop mm. texting fucking chicks about dinner reservations for five seconds, and deliver a quality programming to your audience. I'm trying. I'm reading You're my notes. Me. That's why. Well, I'm reading my notes. Well, the, how about you just partake this? in the conversation that we were already having that I worked all morning to prepare for? Please. I have no, I have notes. I have material too. Fine. Do you think people's artwork should be used against them in the court? Because okay, I, I came like, up like like Y N W Melly. This was funny. He got he made that one song. I got I wake up. I got murder on my mind, and then he fucking killed his. No, homies. but that's what I'm trying to say. I came up with this. This is that's not funny. This is but it's, fun. it's nothing about it. No, well, it's it's I, it's crazy how in the courtroom I can imagine they're like, "What did you mean by this?" No, but song? that's what there's I a have. Key and Peele uh, uh, skit about this. Oh, there is. There's a legit skit where they're like. So what did you mean by the and then I play the thing? Okay, it's like, so it, maybe it is. It's in that context. It's funny. The murder's not fucking funny. But it, so so ice pop so coming to these a rappers Walmart, can't Target, win. They can't Kroger, be real thugs CBS, and they can't be fake GNC, thugs. GNC vitamin shop near you. Oh sorry, I didn't know you were plugging. So investigators brought up the following um, <laughs> in court. Uh, there was a murder on 49th Street in Atlanta. 49th Street in Atlanta, where someone was shot by a nine millimeter out the window of a Sentra. Here's a, a lyric from Young Thug. We caught that boy on 49th. <laughs> Here's some shit that happened, really. Out the window of the center, hit mans with the nine milli. Oh, my God. First of all, great lyrics. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. I made that whole story up. No I, way. Yes, I did. I wrote no the lyrics. Way. But hypothetically. Dude. But hypothetically. <laughs> that's such an Hypothetically, asshole. if that could happen. But that's basically what we're looking at. <laughs> I literally thought that's what he wrote. We caught that boy on 49th. Here's some shit that happened, really. Out the window of the censure. Hit the mans with the nine mil. <laughs> like, that's basically what's happening. So, yo, if you say you murdered someone in a very specific manner, and they're able to tie that back to a person that was murdered in a specific manner... <laughs> Yeah, man, I think your your lyrics should probably be able to be used against you in a court of law. Maybe don't do that. They talk about this in the rap community all the time. Don't self-snitch. Don't self-snitch. By the way, I don't know if Gunnar or Young Thug even did this, but let's. they are starting to bring the, their lyrics into the, um, doc, the court documents and starting to use it against them. So we'll see what happens, but... A lot of entertaining stuff in court. The Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial Wild. is remarkable. What's your favorite moment of that trial? I, I'm pretty so sure many. I saw her 
do cocaine. No, that's dude. That was in court, sh- dude. That was so crazy. Is that what she was doing? I mean, I I'm never gonna place that judgment as if I'm all knowing. But if you're gonna hold a napkin here, and they did actually a, a cut. There's a video on YouTube where they show the napkin. The and, tissue it like napkin. never moved or something. It right? never moved. Uh, and you see her pull it out of her like right here where she like ties it. And then also when she blows, bro, she like she stuck goes, it up. And, then and, goes, the, and by the way, she wasn't sniffing or playing with her nose before that moment. So like they caught her. What a dog. Dog. But <laughs> my favorite savage. moment wasn't the attorney not being present. Amber is attorney. I don't know where she probably got him off of a Groupon or something. I don't know what <laughs> happened. But my favorite moment out of this whole entire court is this girl's like talking and she's really a dude. <laughs> she farts. It goes up. Oh, no, that me. was fucking fake. And I saw that video. It was not true. That was true. And no, it wasn't. That I, was true. No, she didn't fucking fart. That wasn't Amber that farted. It was I the other saw girl. it. It was the girl. And they added the sound effect into a line before she said, sorry. That was me. Oh, that was me. Sorry. It was, it was, no, it was on so camera. Got, no, bro, watch this. It's on Do camera. Not- George just farted. <laughs> Did you fart? It was on camera. Did you fart, George? We're on camera. Did you just fart? Dude, don't tell me my favorite moment was fake. It was fake. It was fake. But the moments that are also in that courtroom are good. Hold on. <laughs> when he objects to himself. Objection. Here, you say, you know, it's you're like, honestly, the, the only thing you bring to the table nowadays is that you're Logan Paul. That's it. Like, you are a useless waste of, of existence. Like if it wasn't if this wasn't called impulsive, I would roll you off the roof right now to a final fucking ending because you are you are useless. You are fucking useless, and you have nothing. You have no one to blame. I'm in the same rooms as you, as late as you are every night, and you. I don't know what it you're is. You're like a fucking lump of clay, bro. <laughs> just unmolded. I don't know what it is. That, this age thing, dude. Like I don't. I just don't handle the hangovers. Dude, as, you're as, in your twenties. <laughs> What the fuck are you saying? Well, you did stop taking all your doctor prescribed stuff. It's just so much. It's just such it's just a regiment. Shit, dude. What's Something. the price of health, you know? You pay a lot of money for health and it ain't working. Because well, I'm not on my regiment. I I'm 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 a little unhealthy now. Like You I'm, look healthy. Well, we were saying something. Um oh the courtroom. Uh, yeah. uh so Amber, here's here's my genuine question. Yeah. Amber Heard I don't. I don't actually know the uh, details of the trial and the domestic violence aside. How do you come back from the whole world knowing that you shit on Johnny Depp's yeah, bed? Yeah, it's tough. Because she's, she's hot. hot. I don't even know if she is hot. Anymore. I wonder if he got pink eyes. She ain't hot. That it's yo. It's weird that she did her makeup in the court. She That's didn't wear makeup. Probably, cause, probably because she wanted to play or she wanted to appear as non-threatening as possible. No, uh, distressed. Oh, you think that's what it is? She like purposely bloated herself and made herself look pale like a zombie yeah, yeah, and shit. Yeah. I mean, she still looks beautiful. I yeah, don't think totally. she looks ugly. I Here's the thing, bro. Like every relationship has issues. There's their issues it was on the, on a whole different level. I, I, I just am proud of how Johnny handled it. Hell yeah. And I think we need to talk about that a little bit more. Guys do get abused mentally and physically, and we get laughed at when you kind of talk about it. The way he had his whole career removed from him. Bro, the way that his exes stood up for him, his co-host stood up. Dude, his exes were like, bro, he wouldn't raise his voice at me, let alone. His therapist was like, she wouldn't let him talk. Like, this man was being beat up mentally, and she removed his life from him. Yeah. And all he did is take it to court. That is the most manly thing I've ever seen in my life. I got to say this. I think the biggest, like... Uh, learning from this more than anything else is be aware of the liability that your potential partner is as soon as possible if you start to see red flags like yo I really fuck with this girl or guy but they are a raving psychopath that is going to try do you know what I'm saying like that is going to try that potentially could ruin my life down like brothers always you something Mike why don't you take your own advice listen and I'm gonna try to be a dick (laughs) but every single uh, 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 woman you've brought to me and I God bless her I pray for all of them they will never ever uh, bring you up to a higher life of living they always will they're anchors well hold on a second every single one of them hold on a second not one my last my last my last ex-girlfriend got me two Plus million new subscribers okay. on YouTube, okay. and but also you Logan raised. Me. No, you don't no, need he only got me three hundred thousand, brother. 
So shut your godforsaken yap. <laughs> I did need her. And I will add to this. She also raised my stock value. It is true. In a heavy fucking way. It is true. Because so I, now because that you're broke, what have you learned? No, I'm not talking about financial stock, George. And also, sorry, the, the subscriber count was running in tandem, so we can't really be sure which one. Per- I, I, well, it, it doesn't just matter. It seemed to well, incrementally no. increase at a higher I, rate. I, dude, once. I, don't, I don't care because I introduced you to a lot of hundred percent. You gave me uh, everything. It could all be 100%, 100%, 100%. It could all be traced back. But, so but, but, but more back. so, but more so. This is the blockchain, brother. The transaction's there. It's Receipts. history. I just want a girl that's going to make you love yourself but, but more so that way you could develop as a better man than you are. Because there's moments where I catch you and I'm like, whoa, that version of Mike could fucking slay a country by himself. You're intelligent, you're everyone. smart, you're confident, but there's some women that put you on a pedestal that isn't rotating in the direction that your life should be going. Why should a pedestal be rotating at all? First Have of you all, ever heard that analogy or were you too busy texting people? If you are standing in a mall and there's some sort of thing on display in the center, mm-hmm. in that way I could see why a pedestal would be rotating. Yeah, yeah. Ours also car pedestals, you know, like the car pedestals, they like rotate. Also, here's another thing. Fuck both of you okay, guys. That was enough, a great enough. analogy. That's <laughs> no, fine. I don't know. You just you he, just he, fall you just said women you, you just said a girl puts me on a pedestal that's rotating in a certain direction. I know what you're fucking trying to say, George. You pick terrible women. Uh, George, these are they're beautiful. They are beautiful. George, but beauty can only go a certain way. And this is why I talk to young women and I say, "Yo, beauty doesn't last forever. Your brain does, right? So like if you're going to live a long healthy life and you're investing in a stock that's going to end at a certain age and then that time is going to you put all your value into it and now it's nothing and for the rest of your life you're left with nothing. You're being very critical. Critical as so, fuck. So so oh, I'd whoa, like whoa, who's I, well, critical. And you're I just want to say this I'd like to know what you think of my picks of women. I, I've told you I loved your picture women. Oh, well, I, I have text messages where I said every single girl you. Dude, I don't want to list them because you're a slut, but there's a lot Bro, of women that you brought around, and I've loved every single one oh, of them. Oh wow, this recently is a lie. you left this one. This is a lie. Where Bell was like, ah, I think that one he fucked up on, and she was a good one. But this is a learning lesson. Also, you need to learn kind of to love your friends first before you start loving women around you. Bro, she was a super. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, no, I'm no, a, no, I gotta no, say no, this. No, I gotta right. say this one more time. You, 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 you like to say. I, you did this. I told you this last night. Yeah. You like to speak in heavy absolutes. But it, but it, that oh, are George. True. George, let but me it is an absolute. No, give me, me one girl. George, George, give me one girl George, you brought stop. around us, and I'm like, George, okay, yeah, you're right. George, let me speak. I don't bring girls around. I, I do one night. That's it. You've never met a girl from me besides my ex that I've ever said, yo, I have interest in this girl ever. It's never happened. True. Okay, so let me just say this. Oh, so you don't want a relationship, George. Beautiful, helpful woman that instills the love of Christ, is looking for a family, will teach me from a scholarly and learnings and morality standpoint. If Stop. I, sorry. Do you think that this sick, deranged motherfucker deserves? I am around wild motherfuckers and I am the wildest. George, I promise you, I get it. They will come when I fix myself at least one percent. Stop! As I am not fucking done. <laughs> <laughs> the last girl I dated was very helpful. Was very, and these fire alarms are fitting for this because I almost got picked up by an ambulance multiple times in this relay. Stop! Was very nice. Was very uplifting. On my bad days, told me that things were going to be better. Pushed me. Gave me confidence. Instilled that stuff in me. Unfortunately, there was a little Amber Heard situation going on there, brother. So things happened. Yeah, I know that. That's but when I I'm said trying to name you one girl, and you named no, me but you the but you brought one. it from no, because she's not a bad girl. She's not a bad all. girl, but she, dude, we can't even talk about the things that she did to you. So what the fuck are we gonna do here? You're giving me a double-edged sword that I can't use. We could use the evidence if you'd like, but here's what I, I want to get to. This is what I want to get to. One, I'm not trying to disrespect you. I'm trying to let you know that you're settling. You're living this life that you want and it's high rewards for now, but I'm telling you there's gonna be a day and you're gonna you're gonna laugh at me now and everybody in the comment section will be like, oh fuck this guy, he's such a pussy, go have fun. No, they're not. They're, the audience loves you. So but here's what I wanna say. There's moments where we're having that's off camera, that's not entertainment. You're a fucking solid dude, and any girl is lucky to have you in their life. But if you don't show those qualities, the good women that have great qualities are not going to come to you, bro. Because all you do is project. I was in the bathroom. No, but that's, no, but face. George, that's what I'm trying. Out. No, but that's she what I'm like, trying to say. He finished me the completion. Like, dude, 
How is a girl going to go home, read John chapter 8, and be like, you know what? I George, really want that guy. I have content to create. I don't have time for your shit. We have a <laughs> show to run that is not based on John 316, motherfucker. <laughs> it is based on bathroom blowjobs, okay? So take your moral high ground or shut up your fucking ass. <laughs> Okay, well, I love you, and I'm here for you. But, I'm, but you're right. But you're right, okay? And I don't know where the fucking road leads for me, but I hope that there's many more subscribers, views, and dollars attached to it. <laughs> yeah. Or um, happy health. No, fuck that fucking... shit. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> George, yes, you're right about all of that. I need therapy. I need more God. I need a lot of things in my life. But right now, this show, my show... My homie's building drink companies, 99s. I got to facilitate this and that. I just don't have time for Bible. I love the Bible and I love Jesus. I don't have time for like the whole thing. Maybe I never will have time, George. Maybe you'll see me 55 at the club with a sign that comes out that says Mike's aging. That's what the signs. Who knows, George? I don't write the script here. It's brought upon me by God Almighty. <laughs> Five second little thing before we move on. Why are we moving on? Where are we going? Oh, okay. I just want to make sure because I thought you guys were getting tired of me. Like, no, we are. No, no, no. So here's the thing. I thought the same way, bro. I really did. I thought if I get in a relationship that everything's going to slow down. That happens when you have the wrong woman. When you have the right woman, bro, go look at my life and how it shot up when Belle entered. You know I why? I know. Because I loved her so much that I go, okay, I got to start fucking getting shit done so that this life could be great together. And you know what she did? She added to it. But you're a normal Mentally, person, Mentally, physically, George. spiritually, when the right person, let me tell you something, a good woman is the spine of a family. Do you hear what you just said? A good woman, a woman is, is the spine, spine of, of a family. Do you know what I was doing at 16 years old? Heroin. <laughs> like, what do you, 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 I have this conversation with people all the time when they're like, oh, I was trying to explain it to her and she came back with this and I say the following. Stop trying to apply logic to an illogical situation. Thank you for your morality advice. And for your, I, and you, once again, you're right. <laughs> you are 100% right, George. But guess what? The Entourage show was not written about a family in Oklahoma <laughs> with three kids who went to Bible study on Sundays. Okay? No, but it was I love the Bible, and I love Jesus. I never but even I, brought up the Bible in Jesus. No, I know what you're thinking. Tuscaloosa is not made for us. All right? Wait, that was, is that Oklahoma? <laughs> yeah, Tuscaloosa, we love it. Why don't you get a wild girl that's like you, but also would just be for you and build you? There's a wild girl out there that's like, I found one. I'm in love with her right I now. I love bathroom sex and blow jobs, and I really Yeah, she does. That. The one I'm in love with right now does, just not with me. <laughs> Those jokes with a family, motherfucker. <laughs> Pant his face. Pant his face. No, 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 clean it. Pant his face. Pant his face. <laughs> How did you spit on yourself and land on your own face, bro? It's a beard, George. Try getting one. <laughs> I came out the womb with one. What are you fucking talking about? <laughs> my mother had to nair my face in the third grade because I was too young to use a fucking shaver. Are you serious? I swear on everything I love. I came home and I go, Mom, I'm tired of them calling me Pablo. Because I just had a mustache. <laughs> and she goes, son, she goes, they're just jealous because you're a real man. I go, but I'm in the second grade. And then she's like, okay. So we went home. We passed the shavers. I was like, mom. And she's like, no, you're going to need this. And we put fucking nair on. And it worked the first time. Second time I tried to do it myself, I fucking burned. Ugh. So I just looked like Pablo who shaved and had like a, a tan line here for like three weeks, bro. And by the way, on fucking picture day. And I have that picture. I'll show it to you guys. Can I tell you something? I get curious sometimes how many, because of our absolute mental moron nature, moronic nature of our brains, how many stories get retold on this show? He, I, I promise you he told that exact same story. Really? And everyone in the audience was just cracking up. Like it was, I've heard that, so I'll find the fucking clip. I think I told you in person. I think I was just like venting to you. All right, listen. <laughs> this is why this show is great. Three completely opposing viewpoints. <laughs> Polar opposites on all sides George, I love you You are necessary And as long as you don't assault a team member You will be on the show forever I would never forever. assault you guys Guys, the Island Boys try to fight me on the podcast that And doesn't I would stand never touch up. them, let alone you I just said that because you guys You guys get rowdy and you throw steel chairs at each other So I was like, I'll, I'll say some reckless things To be part of the You want to hear something reckless? Yeah. A stranger stuck her entire finger in my asshole the other day 
What a par. That that was fucking amazing. Mike got his first colonoscopy. Pro prostate exam. That's what that's what I meant. Oh, so this wasn't sex based. I I thought it might have been. And I went and I got a, an STD check. Completely clear, by the way. More than happy to. Can we get the results on the screen, Caleb? Is that cool? <laughs> That's pretty so fucking. Right incredible. here is my gonorrhea and, and chlamydia results. I actually got tested twice. We'll get both on the screen at the same time. That's Completely normal. negative, non-detection. Uh, so I went, and she was like, "Well, you're you're clean." I mean, and because I've been having this pain in my nuts, and I thought it might be related to the test. <laughs> I thought it might be. Who knows, right? She goes, "Let me. Have you ever had a prostate exam before?" And I was like. Not in a doctor's office. But, yeah, exactly. But 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 uh, I, I, I'm here for it. She was like, I want to check out your prostate because I think you might have a uh, an infection, like a bacterial infection in your butthole. Well, in your prostate. Oh. Uh, uh. Did you? So she's like, so she's like, what? What? Basically, what I need to do is I need to, I need she, I need to milk your prostate. That's what they call it. Oh, bro, milk? hold on. I can't, I can't, do, I can't do the story, bro. Wait, what do you mean milk? I can't. Well, well that's no, just what it's called. No, no, How do you do it? You just a finger? No. I'll just give you. Forget the terminology. <laughs> no. So, so she wanted me. So she told me to lay sideways on the bed and put my knee, my knees to my elbows. Oh my god! Like oh my this, god! This sideways. Child's pose. Like like this. And she was like, she was like, listen. Oh. There's a good chance that you'll pass out from from this. Shut up. That's Ooh, what she said. I said, lady, listen. I am made of iron. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> she, she, she had done it so many times that she knew to just fucking do it. Just run. Oh, my God. And, oh and my I'm talking God. like, and I'm talking like not to get graphic, but like to the back wall. Like all the you, way. You, like He called me after. He goes, dude, I can't believe how far they go. Like, like. What if she's a doctor with long fingers? And it's and not big slow. Hands. It's not fingers. One. It, oh. And it's not slow. Whole finger. It, they go like this. They go, Pow. So why I don't like butt stuff, and a story that I may have told on this podcast before, I had this done to me when I was 12. I got a skull fracture, seven millimeter skull fracture. Yep. I have a plate in my head now because of it. Yep. And while I was at the doctor's office, um, I don't know why, what test they needed to do that involved like fingering my fucking 12 year old. <laughs> I was about to say, we got a pediatrician. Are you going? I don't, I don't he know. He comes but, out of the room and they go, "Did anyone just see that random man who snuck into the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> we got a code four emergency in three twelve. Who was that guy?" I'm I'm sitting there unconscious. You know, I just broke my fucking skull. Concussions out the wazoo on like three sides of my head. Just tragedy. And all of a sudden, I feel this pain in my butt, and I lunge across the bed. Like fully, like back from the dead. I'm like, ah, like, what the fuck was that? And my papa flipped on this doctor. So I have PTSD in general. I think from that, it's why I'm not like cool with all the butt play stuff. But my dad flipped on this doctor. You can imagine, Greg. He, hey, motherfucker, how would you like it if I stuck my finger up your ass right now? Because I went like, at, at, you know, like the my, like Cleveland it's hospital. A medical, <laughs> it's a medical thing. But he dude. didn't tell me or anyone. And also, why? Why? No, but that, that is the, no because they use the right they approach. Did ever figure out why? Maybe internal it, I, I think it had to be it had to be some sort of internal bleeding, but um, <laughs> just not not with all that. You know, my mom my mom told me that the anus is an exit and not an entrance, and well, not that's these, not something a mother should be telling her son. Not these days. Well, that's what I'm a little hypocritical. So not these honest. days. My mom traumatized <laughs> me when I was a kid. She goes. <laughs> oh man, my mom's gonna get mad. Bob, don't listen to this part. My mom looked at me. It was, I was growing up and being like an adult. I was talking about my girlfriend, and she just, bro, fucking ruined my life by turning to me while holding the Bible. And she goes, "Remember, Georgie, the mouth is only made for worshiping." <laughs> and I, just, I was just like, "Why would you tell me?" Damn, she boring as hell. Yeah, but yeah, but also no, I no. She was just trying to. Well, like, she's. Uh, uh, I hope so. Or. Pfft. Fucking my dad has a boring life. Yeah, was that's good. That's my mother. What's wrong with you, bro? Yeah, no, you're but fucked up. Yeah, I'm really fucked up. I need a therapist. Might get one and then send them to me. No, but she is right. You can borrow mine. You don't talk to yours. <gasps> <laughs> she is right, though. By the way, it's just some of these girls will really stop it. Stop it. Okay. Uh, yeah, worshiping something, dude. Yep. <laughs> um, that is so bad, bro. Sometimes twice at night and twice in the morning. I hate famous functions. <laughs> That's an inside joke. <laughs> oh, was it? Was it an inside joke? I, I don't like famous functions. 
Famous I realized, functions? I've been realizing more and more lately. You, that is the most cap I've no, ever no, heard. No, no, no. Let me Mike let me, Malak does not like famous functions. Let me explain. What, you don't like burgers either? You don't like porn stars? You don't like heroin? <sighs> let me just explain further. Let me, let me put a little bit more specifics on it. I don't like the ones that where there's like a red carpet, a suit, like people are in suits. And it's like very like you know the person like that have they have the trays with the, like a little um, meatball on a toothpick, and you like oh, take yeah. it. What do they call the soirees or, or gala, galas, right? Like yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I just don't like them. Yeah. Because because y- now you you're very good at them, and you walk around and you you like hobnob, and it's like you know there's only so long I could stand with this crowd and watch billionaire after billionaire come up to you and be like saw the fight with Tyron Woodley really enjoyable <laughs> before I'm just like why are we fucking here we don't need these motherfuckers and this isn't Jake Paul how long do we have to but you always you always like find like oh that girl over there she's a supermodel I'm like yeah she's seven feet six bro go enjoy go talk about PETA and fucking UNICEF for the rest of the night <laughs> I'm going to the fucking club with Tav and Kifa to a basement, to dwell in a basement with my train spotting t-shirt. Have fun, motherfucker. I'm out. Which is what happened last night. He'll just hobnob. This kid can hobnob. It's because he's got the clothes for it. He's got to have hobnob. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I put on this shirt and I went, oh, I'm on. I knew it. I knew it, dude. You wear the right outfit and it gets your confidence up. Oh, super, super up. Swear to God, this shirt is so sick. It's just no matter how high his confidence goes, it's always offset when someone comes up to him and they're like, that time we were on the boat talking about the fucking Ben Askren fight, man. Like, that was great. Yeah, this just guy, shut this guy up. came up to me. He, he goes, yeah, I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a good friend. You were on my boat. I'm like, yo, dog, I don't fucking know you. <laughs> It's always weird when somebody else tells you that they're a good friend. Whoa, dude, well, we're good friends. It's confusing to me if you. So obviously it was Jake on his boat. But if you spent the whole day with my brother on your boat, the guy that's tatted up and has a beard down to here. It looks like that thing in the basement of the Goonies. <laughs> Sloth. You fucking know Sloth. that that wasn't me, baby Ruth. So so. <laughs> He does not look like that. Well, he's on his way. He keeps up his boxing career. Horizontally expanding. You went like this for his boxing career, and it's, it's going pretty well. He's won every fight he's done. And he made like $40 million last year. Doesn't matter. He put it all in crypto. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> poor. There will be no more prime bottles by the time I'm done. Dude, no, I'm so proud of Jake. He's, he's crushing it. <laughs> Useless. I mean, it's like there's one brother, and then there's the polar opposite. One absolutely winning at everything. The other is just a blivet of a human. Just a fucking bloated moron. Just put him out of his misery. Get it over with, dude. Let the one brother excel. Everybody thinks you're him anyways. Just let him fucking go. Just let him go. Just fucking give up, brother. It's over. It's a wrap. You are Luna. You are Luna. It's over. Hey man, are you good? No! Oh! <laughs> and by the way, this sound guy is fantastic. Yeah, this is really so good. You are so good. I noticed you're so good. Can you zoom to him? Every, to him? Ta- every time Can we scream, he he turns the levels down, and I we haven't peaked once. Can you pan to him? Yo, hire this guy. And by the way, great fucking beard. Not to mention he also had gum. When I asked who had gum, and out of everybody here, there's 30 people here, he had fucking gum. I actually enjoyed it. We had a pizza together, and I enjoyed our conversation. Uh, we really like you, man. I was going to whisper. New York, we got good people here. Yeah, the best Shut people up, in the Dylan. world. I was going to I was gonna whisper. <laughs> I was going to whisper and make a Zach Galifianakis joke, because he kind of looks like him. But, yeah. I heard, but I forgot he's a sound guy. Yeah, so you can, can hear, he can hear everything saying, I'm saying. Yeah. But we, we have I'm a the hate. only one here <laughs> who can hear what you were saying. I don't have headphones. What's your problem? I What's don't going know. on? I realize I am a problem. I am. No, I'm you're so the sorry. greatest thing that ever happened. You know, we have a hate-hate relationship with our sound guys, so this feels weird. We we I've we've almost killed every sound All guy we've them. ever worked with. It, there is something about New York that just breeds professionality and 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 fucking just the people here are built different. I met Jeff's family's little kids. They're yeah. like three and fucking four. And so I walked. Siblings? No, yep. they were like yeah, the, brothers. <laughs> I met his family's little kids. Yeah, they're, yeah, yeah, they're was, like his brothers. It was kids. Jeff's brothers, and he his he had kids that are brothers. 
Right. Little like little kids that are related in yeah. some way. And I went up to him and I was like, dude, listen. They were looking at me like this. They were just kids, bro. And they were like, Jeff's like, you got to meet them. And I went up to him and I was like, listen, never discount the luxury that is being from this tri-state. I said, you're going to meet a lot of pussies in your fucking life. If you leave this tri-state, you will win. You will annihilate everyone. Undeniably, because you are from here. That's what you told the five year old. No, they were like three, bro. They were looking at me like their head was gonna explode. I was like, You wanna win? I go, Get out of here, go to California. They move in slow motion, buddy. I go, You'll win on <laughs> levels you can never believe simply because of where you're from. He's like, He's, he's looking at you like this. Uh, okay, so I just want a grilled cheese. <laughs> no, you, know, I, you know what I told him? What? I said, he Because he got that new cousin, Jeff had his baby, yeah, yeah. Liv. I go, yo, you got a brand new baby cousin, Liv. And he's like, yeah. And I go, she's kind of a bitch, huh? <laughs> <laughs> she's like one. Yeah, two. well, bro, she doesn't, like, Jeff puts her on FaceTime, and she's, like, kind of, like, sour towards me sometimes. Yeah. What does she say? She goes, Logan. <laughs> and she also says, this one's funny. She goes, jump off the top rope. <laughs> she goes, jump off the Sounds top Sounds like rope. she's a fan. It's weird to hear you, you know, shaming her like that. I was, I was being facetious. It's weird you guys talk to children like this. I was being facetious. It's it's very funny to me to talk to children exactly like you talk yeah, to Yeah, 100%. Movies. I agree. I, I agree that. completely. It's so funny. They, they got to age up. And they try to like figure it out. <laughs> like, what is happening? Like, <laughs> I by, love it. By okay. the way, when I gave that advice, the dad looked at me. He was like, you're fucking A, 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 a fucking right, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're 100% right, brother. Yeah, a, f- a, a fucking, fucking right. You know, occasionally <laughs> I'll fucking slip up. It's rare. Hey, yeah, you fuck you. Yeah, it's fucking. a fucking right, man. Um. We talk a lot of uh, just some va- real value. Are where? What are we on time? Don't. Why do you do that? How are we on time? You shook your head like it was the shittiest thing I ever <laughs> fucking asked you. He goes like, I go. How are we on time? Like, who gives a fuck? Just end it. No one cares. This is fucking. And he like made me feel like such a piece of shit. I, I, like I asked you like some fucked up question. <laughs> hey, he's not lying because even I was like. I not like this I, podcast. I, I, didn't get, I didn't get that vibe. Really? Wait, this it's podcast like, is know. incredible. <laughs> what are you talking yeah, he about? He was just like, <laughs> oh, oh, the vibe from him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're good, bro. We're good. No, okay. So what? I, so I want to add a little bit of value for the people that are still around. I was thinking about this today. We talk about a lot of big projects on the show, most mostly because of you. You're useless on the show, but outside of this show, you're incredible. Prime boxing, ninety nine originals. At, you do a lot of liquid marketplace. Liquid marketplace. You do a lot of big shit, and I think that the audience watching this, and a, and a lot of the, the the younger guys watch it, and they think to themselves, "I'm so far away from what he's doing, or from what Mike's doing, or from what George is doing," and that that can be demotivating. And I was thinking about this today, and I was like, the base that we built silently. And the time that we spent building that base is what allows us to make the plays that we make now. Yep. That daily grind, that vlogging, that vining, that building of your brand, that at points was silent or unliked or, or you know, not respected as much as it could have been, was what allowed you to do everything that you do now. And so I just thought of this message for the audience of people doing something that they don't exactly want to be doing right now or, or aren't fulfilling their passion or their exact desire to stay the course. Because when you build a base or what I like to consider a fortress from which you can fight from and where you have room to retreat both financially and, and, and by way of feeling accomplished and proud of yourself, that's a very good feeling. And that is what allows you to do the things that you dream of doing. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes a while, too. It, it takes, does. It takes a long time. Any real success, unless you win the lottery, takes, like, count on it planning or taking a decade. We were just at Daniel Arsham's studio, the artist, right before we came here. He was nice enough to invite us to a studio. Finally got to meet him. And the, the guy's one of the most talented artists, I think, alive big, right big now. Time, he's he's absolutely incredible. And, and he's showing us around his studio. And, you know... 15 employees that are there he's got a bunch working remotely just and 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 these sculptures and art that are so beautiful and you know he he, he's in fashion and he's a creative director for the cleveland cavaliers he's making sick business plays and um, going to art shows and 
I asked him, I'm like, dude, like, how your infrastructure is absurd. Like, what is the T? And I'm just, you know, picking his brain. And he goes, dude, you have to remember, I've had, I've been in the studio for 10 years. He goes, I've been doing this for a long time. And it, it, even for me, it was a wake up call because I was asking him about, again, uh, full circle, putting some actual real infrastructure around this team. We are way too skinny. And, um, it just takes a long time to, to build the right team, the right people, and then accomplish the thing that you want to do if you're not already great at it. Like sometimes that takes a lot of time too. Like you got to work towards your craft. Dude, I've, I've, I've been a um, little stale on camera like for a majority of my life. Look at, look at the one interview of me um, going to the wrestling state premieres. Like Logan Paul goes to wrestling state. Like watch, watch <laughs> me on camera. Video. Like I was not comfortable on camera, but then I just started doing it over and over and over again. Now it's been a decade plus, and like this shit is breezy to me. Automatic, but it took forever. That's a great. That's a great note because how many people you come across, especially in this day and age where the ability to create digital content is like kind of table stakes to get into the space, and even in even in business situations or 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 whatever it is that you do for a living the ability to create content around that is such an important aspect of just like being successful. And every person you talk to, or 98% of them, it always comes back to, I remember the first time I made a video and I was so uncomfortable and I felt like that for the first three years of making videos, but now it's like second nature to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's such an important learning lesson because people don't want to see themselves on camera. People watching the show right now, Dread the idea of hearing their voice back. Do you remember I, hearing not, your I, voice I, back? I, I'm, I'm not even talking about on cam like any craft, dude. Like, yeah, yeah. unless you're like a prodigy or like inherently good at a thing, plan on it taking three to five to ten years before you feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Just comfortable. Yeah. That's all I got, dude. Look back to our first podcast. <laughs> that was so. Yeah, you, no, no joke. Look back at our first all, podcast. All of us. He, I ran out. You stayed in there, but like we were all feeling it at first. You oh, know what I'm saying? Oh, like, how do course. we do this? How do we do this? And now look at us. The number one podcast in the world just acquired by Spotify. Wait, what? No, I'm just kidding. Fuck. Oh my God. I thought that's how you dropped the news on me. I was like, really? No, no. That's fucked up. No, nah, probably be some negotiations. Huh? Did they pass? Did they pass? Like the. A test? Yeah, did they, they pass on us? No. George, we're the number one fucking podcast in the world. I sat at the WWE, the executive chair, office with Vince McMahon and Co. the other day, looked at him straight in the fucking eyes and said, I am the host of the number one podcast in the world, Vince. But what did he say? Nothing. All right. It's just weird that that's still... But I lied to Vince McMahon. Yeah. No, we are the number one. <laughs> we are. We are. We, we really are. I really and that's like why I'm podcast. saying it. That's what I'm saying it. By sentiment. By sentiment. You know? I just... We are, dude. Joe Rogan's great. Caller Daddy's great. Nelk Boys are great. We're the number one podcast in the world. Yeah. Thank and you guys for yeah. listening to this episode of Impulsive, the number one podcast in the world. We love you. Hit that subscribe button. Hopefully next time I see y'all, I'll be in better shape. All right. Maybe I'll see you at a bathroom at a party or something. Are we done?